Hey, hey, Rhonda Roseanne here, CPA and Advanced Certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor with New Business Directions. Today I have a video for you, very short video, about how to add a user in QuickBooks Desktop. First of all, why do you want to add a user to your QuickBooks Desktop file? Well, maybe you have multiple people in your bookkeeping office and you would like to have Mary have permissions for accounts payable and Susie have permissions for accounts receivable and for the two of them not to have any access to payroll or sensitive financial information. Well, you could do this by setting up users and restricting them and giving them a certain set of permissions in the QuickBooks file so that only they can do what only they can do. And that way they will have their own username and their own password and their own permissions. Another reason that you would want to do this is because there's an audit trail in QuickBooks and it keeps track of transactions and what happens when they're originally entered and any time that they are changed. So if they change a date, an amount, a posting account, there are various iterations of that in the audit trail. And this is nice if you're trying to peel back the layers and figure out what happened to a transaction. It's also nice, or not so nice, if you've had some nefarious activity in your QuickBooks file to be able to go back and see who did what when. That is why you would want to add a user in your QuickBooks file. Only the administrative user can add or edit a user in the QuickBooks file. So we're going to pop over here. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to have you looking at the 2020 QuickBooks Accountant version. And in here, we're in a sample company file. We're going to go up to company and down to set up users and passwords and over to set up users. And here is where you need to put the administrator password into the system. Without that, you cannot get to the screen that allows you to add or edit or delete users. Today we're going to add a new user and we are going to start with Mary. Stop here. Don't come up with some creative password because the first time Mary logs in, she will have to change that password. So make it something simple. Tell Mary what it is and then she will log in and when she does so, she will have to change that password immediately. I'm going to click next and now we have a couple of choices. We can give Mary access to all areas of QuickBooks, selected areas of QuickBooks, or we can make her the external accountant. Well, she is the accounts payable clerk, so we're going to give her access to selected areas of QuickBooks. I'm going to click next, and since she's payables and not receivables, I'm going to say no access. Purchases and payables, I'm going to give her full access. Checking in credit cards, the ability to print checks and pay the bills that she's put in as a payables clerk, I'm going to give her full access to that. No access to payroll, no access to sensitive accounting, no access to sensitive financial, and then I'm going to let her be able to change transactions that she has entered herself. So if she's put something in and made a mistake, I want her to be able to go back and change or delete that transaction, and then I'm going to say, no, I don't want her to change anything before the closing date. So there's a closing date password, and I don't want her to be able to do that. Then on this final screen, you can see what she has for permissions, whether she can create, print, or run reports. You can see that she has yeses in purchases. She has yeses in accounts payable. She has yeses in checking and credit cards, and she can change or delete things that she has created. Once I'm done with that, I can click finish. I'm going to add another user. I'm going to add Susie this time. And I'm going to give her a simple password that I will tell her and she will have to change right away. Now Susie's our accounts receivable clerk. I'm going to say selected areas of QuickBooks and next. So I want her to have full access to the sales and accounts receivable. And I do not want her to be able to view complete customer credit card numbers, so I leave that unchecked. I don't want her in payables and purchasing, but I do want her to be able to make deposits. So I'm going to give her full access here so that she can make deposits and see the reports that come from that. 
I'm going to say no to payroll, no to sensitive accounting, no to sensitive financial. Yes, she can change the activities and transactions that she has put in, nothing before the closing date. Review what I have given her permissions for and click finish. That's how easy it is to add new users. When I'm done, I close. And if I wanted to test this, I would log out of administrator and I would log in as Mary or Susie and see what they can see. Why don't we do that? Why don't we go file and close company log off and I'm going to log in now as soon as the screen comes up I'm going to open it back up. I'm going to change this to Mary and I'm going to put in that simple password that I put before and now you'll see that I'm still opening a sample file and I'm logged in as Mary, and as Mary, all these one-time messages that I don't need to see helping me with the file. If I am Mary and I'm the accounts payable clerk, I should easily be able to enter a bill. Click on enter a bill, the screen opens. However, if I am Mary and I want to create an invoice, it tells me that you need sales and accounts receivable permission to perform this action. We have restricted Mary's permissions to just those that she needs to be the accounts payable clerk. When in doubt, limit and then go and test it. If you need more robust permissions for your users, please consider using Enterprise Solutions. Enterprise Solutions has something like 115 granular permissions and predefined roles. So if we can help you with that, that would be great. And that's how you add a user in QuickBooks Desktop. If you have any questions about QuickBooks or need assistance, please start with our website at newbusinessdirections.com. If you want, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can check out our blog on our website. And if you need help organizing your chaos, or streamlining the process, please give us a call. It's okay, we can help.